Hello, everyone. Welcome to Comic Con 2022, where I get to introduce you to a super cool book that's becoming a movie soon. I have the team behind Ski Weekend with me right now. First, congratulations, and I'm so excited for what you guys have on the horizon. Thank you. We're so excited to be here. It's my first Comic Con, so. Here under great circumstances. You have a very, very exciting weekend ahead of you. I And I can give you tips. I will give you more tips Please. beyond just going to Brian's 24 for every single meal you eat here. Mm -hmm. Sounds awesome. They should sponsor us. So first, I need to ask you to do a synopsis of your book, just in case anyone out there does not know what Ski Weekend is just yet. Yeah, no problem. So we pitched it as the Breakfast Club meets Alive. So it's six teens, one dog. On the way to a ski trip, they get stranded in the mountains. And it's a story of who lives and who dies. Okay, so my big question for writing that book is, we see a lot of books and movies and shows that are survival thrillers. Are there any survival thriller do's and don'ts that you kind of pinpointed? Things you've seen in other shows and things like that, where you're like, <laughs> yes. I wanna do that, and things that you wanted to avoid. Yeah, well, so I would say the number one survival thriller, like do not do is leave the car, which mm -hmm. unfortunately, when you write a book that's a survival thriller and you have to have action, the teens actually do have to leave the car. Otherwise, you won't have a story. But I would say if you are driving a Tahoe or on a mountain ski trip and you get stranded, stay in the car. Much better chance of surviving. So I think about this a lot with just about everything I watch and read, and this happened here. I love when stories make me wonder, how would I fare in this particular situation? I'm sure you've thought about it, having written the book. I don't know about you too, Miles, but what would you do if you were in this situation? Actually, to get more specific with it, what would be your greatest asset that you would bring to the group so you could survive, but then what would, you, what would your biggest flaw be that might screw you all over. I, I would say my greatest asset is I intermittent fast every day. So that oh, could geez. probably prove crucial while I'm stuck out there in the wow. wilderness, right? So I'm already used to not eating for 18 hours a day. So I'll be good eating on a little bit and trying to conserve some energy. I, that's a really good answer. I could not do that. I like to eat. So I'm doing it right now. <laughs> starving. <laughs> he hasn't had breakfast yet. Um, for me, I think so. There's a character in the book, one of my favorite characters. His name is Hunter and he's kind of like the survival the survival mm -hmm. expert, and he says, and I learned this, I did so much research in writing this book and now the screenplay, but he says the number one most important survival skill, which is true, which I learned, is morale. So I think I would hopefully do a good job of trying to cheer people on, keep people positive, optimistic, maybe tell a couple of fun stories mm -hmm. to keep people entertained and distracted. But I was actually really surprised to read that. I would have thought like, making a fire or, you know, something else that is a more like physical skill, but actually it's morale. People who, yeah. when you start to get like depressed or negative or down, that's when you start to make mistakes and things go awry. You make me feel more valuable because with every single survival thriller I watch or read, I always say to myself, it's about time you learn how to like build a fire or yeah. even like to cook the most basic food, but I never do that. I can help with the morale though. Yes. Yeah. So I, I am useful. I don't think I can make a fire, to be honest. If I was in the wilderness, I don't think I could do it. But, I definitely but my, my morale would be high. I'd stick with it. Okay. <laughs> we, we've got the most valuable traits mm -hmm. here, really. We're going to be fine. Um, Miles, for you, can you walk us through the acquisition process a little bit? Because this yeah. is an especially big deal for you this Absolutely. is going to be your first feature as a mm -hmm. producer your first feature for your company so yeah. why this particular story you know what i think it's very unorthodox the way but i guess that's hollywood no, nothing's a, a blueprint of how to do it i actually knew liani through my dad um she was a lawyer on a previous deal he had done like 10 12 years ago yeah right? and we just met and i read the book and i really fell in love with it i thought it'd be the perfect thing to do as my first feature i i love the story and i also love working with hardworking, talented people like herself. And I just thought all the pieces were put together in the right way and we should give it a shot. What about for the company itself? Because I mean, this might be overstating it, but your first feature can sometimes like define what people yeah. come to expect for you in the long run. So what qualities of Ski Weekend are you excited to define your company's start in a sense? I think for me, something that I'm really working with in my company is mostly thrillers. And I think this one's great because I love a YA. I've always been very into all young adult movies and books. And I think to combine both those things is exciting for me because my passions always lied in YA stories as well as trying to bring the thriller aspect, obviously with the heritage and working with my dad on this project. I think that just lined up to be the right thing. 
Having learned from your dad, what specific things about him as a producer do you plan to adopt in your own way of going about making I think, movies? I think it's something that he did when he became a producer, and I'm going to do it that I did myself, and also learning from him as being a former professional athlete. I think the most important thing that he stresses to me is just to really grind and work hard and, and take no time off. And like I said earlier about the way that I acquired it, but there's no blueprint to how to get a movie from the book to the screen. You just have to as a producer, do everything you can and just keep working to put the pieces together. And I'm excited to do that. I think it's such a great story and it's it's worth telling. I know that you're not this far in the process yet, but thus far, is there any like tactic you've used to further this project along that's just, you know, something really out of left field that you didn't expect to do, but it's helpful for you now? I think what's most helpful for me is the passion. Like I would never want to work on anything that I'm not passionate about that I don't believe that would be a great movie or something that I wouldn't want to see myself. Like if this was a movie and I wasn't working on it, I would love to see it. So I just think if I could bring that passion into every pitch or meeting and as we start to go out to actors and actresses, just really show them how much I believe it. And obviously, Leonie believes in it, too, after writing it. And now that we're working on the script, it's really good, too. So I think just entering every meeting with as much passion behind the project as possible is not I wouldn't call it left field, but that's probably my tactic. I, I would add to I think there's something really unique about Miles and Oren, both coming from like the world of being professional athletes to now being producers. They really like I've noticed it in working together. They really care about it's weird to call myself talent, but like the creator or the talent, you are talent. They, they really care about, you know, that person having a say in the story mm -hmm. and involvement. And I think that that is really rare. I do have a lot of friends and colleagues that are writers as well, young adult authors, you know, adult thriller authors. And it's like they sell the project and then it's, you know, hands off. Yeah. They never hear about it again. I ask them what's going on. I have no idea. You know, once mm -hmm. I sold it, I've never heard from them again. Maybe it doesn't get made, whatever. It's like they don't they have no skin in the game afterwards. And I feel like yeah. this has been such an amazing experience. I feel like I'm in such good hands. And I don't know if that's like from being well, an athlete or that experience, but they just yeah. really care about the creator and my I, input. I think for me personally, obviously being a first time producer and being new to this, I, I didn't want to be the type of person that takes your vision and tries to make it my own because it's not. It is your vision. It's just my job as the yeah. producer to make it come to life. So if I didn't include you in every step, whether it be someone to help you write it or when we go out to an actor or a director, like it's not really coming from my eyes or my brain. It's coming from yours and we have to work together or else it would completely change the story. So you are you're the screenwriter on this. Yeah. I wasn't what? at first. Oh, yeah. I wasn't at first. So That's been a new. <laughs> well, new what was that process like? Why? Why were you not going to be originally, and now that's not the case anymore? So it's actually. So I think I. So I did write a screenplay a long time ago, and I actually filmed a short with my brother. Um, so I've always really been interested in it, and I did mention when we first like we're in mm -hmm. the acquisition phase. I said. I really would love to screenwrite, but I also want to be involved as a producer. And Orrin, of course, you know, he's like very wise and very sage. He's like, I think, you know, this is your first adaptation. Maybe like, let's keep you on the producer creative side, but I don't know about the screenwriting. Like, we'll see how that goes. That might be a lot for you to chew off. Mm -hmm. And then as we started going out, the feedback we got was everyone loves the story and falls in love with it. But in Hollywood, people want to see a screenplay to kind of know like what it's going to look like pacing wise. And I just randomly, I think I just well, we woke up and was it, yeah. like, I'm going to. Yeah, just I'm give it a stab. It. And you've done such a great job. I think that maybe we cut out a couple pages and then. Yeah, and it's then really we'll long. Be, yeah, and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> but I'm actually I'm having a tough time, too, because I love it so much. I don't even know what to cut out yet. It's yeah. so good. But we'll we'll get there soon, shortly after this Comic Con. I feel like that's always the toughest part <laughs> yeah. of this cutting, early on is cutting. paring things down. Yeah. But it's important. I get yeah. it. All right, so you already brought up casting. And again, I know that's a little ways into the future, but what are some of your priorities in terms of upholding what's in the source material, but then qualities of the character that you think there's great opportunity in finding an actor who could maybe bring something different to the role that we don't know from the book? Yeah, I mean, I think where we're at right now, especially with casting, this is so exciting because there is so much young adult, and I mean, like young adult, but also like in their 20s actors right now more than ever in Hollywood. And we just think we've gone through the list of people that we'd want. Yeah. And, and it's great because you have a melting pot of a cast of six people in a car. And I just think that that's really obviously with any survival story, it's all about what happens and who lives and who dies. But really, like the core of what makes this such a great story is their interdynamics in the car. So I think that definitely one or two big names. Then you never know. We can have a, an emerging star come out of this thing, too. I would love to have some unknowns. Yeah. That's one thing we talked yeah, about, no, I think. This, it, could, it could obviously really emerge a star being yeah. in this movie. 
I also think like, and we've talked about this too, it's a really diverse cast, which I love. We have Chinese American, mm -hmm. we have Hunter who's black. I mean, it's, it's, it's not your typical cookie cutter. So I think that provides a lot of opportunity for different actors. So I love that aspect mm -hmm. of it. And I think we talked about this too, every single character. I mean, it took me like 10 years to write the book. So every character is crafted very deeply. They all have like a really interesting backstory, yeah. their own views, their own experience. I really think, and we've talked like each character would be a really great meaty role for someone. So it's not like, even though Sam, Sam is the main character, Sam Lakin, even though obviously she's, you know, the yeah. main character, every single role we want someone well, who's also like going to bring a lot to each it. Each role, all these kids have so much depth. They have yeah. so much history together, yeah. going to high school together, and they have drama from past. And it's really, that's what's so great about the story is when they're stuck in a car, how those things like rise unfold. and unfold. Yeah. All right. Two part character question for yes. you. When you were writing the book, which character changed the most from like the inception of the idea from character to yeah. the finished book? Um, I would say Hunter. I would say Hunter for sure. I was really inspired. So when I wrote the character originally, I had a lot of ideas and I knew he was the survivalist and all of that. But I was actually really inspired during the um, Black Lives Matter movement because that happened when I was towards final edits. And I'll never forget this. Mm -hmm. Like, I love Ava DuVernay. I think she's incredibly talented. And I remember she was tweeting about black cowboys and that whole history. And I actually, I'm a little embarrassed to admit I didn't know anything about it. Like, I never learned about yeah. that in high school. I mean, I'm old, so maybe that's part of it. No. But I didn't learn about it in school and I was shocked because I feel like that's something that we should all know about. I just thought through Hollywood, you know, at white cowboys, that's all you ever saw. Yeah. And so when I saw that tweet, it made me kind of go back and add more layers to his character and put that in. And I, I'm, I'll always be grateful to her for that because it really opened my eyes. Yeah. And I think it makes him like his story is much well, richer now. Him being so proud of his heritage yeah. makes him such a great character. And it yeah. also helps him being like a leader, like we say, in, in this situation. Yeah. She's one of my favorite people in this industry. All right, oh, second good. part okay. of that yeah, question I now. I don't, oh, I didn't know that. I don't know her personally, but I think mm -hmm. she's unbelievable. She is a lovely human being to interview mm -hmm. at least. And okay. I just love the passion she pours into yeah. every single project she yeah. makes. Second part of that character question. So we have Hunter being the one who changed yeah. the most during the writing process for the book. But what about from book to script? Which character changed the most during that part of the process? No one's changed. Yeah, I was going to say, no, one's, no one's really changed. I'm sure that, they that's, will. that is the hard part that we're dealing with right now it's, is who we want to change a little bit. It's pretty faithful right now, yeah. but it's a little bloated. Mm -hmm. So it's the Godfather. We're gonna it's Fine. the Godfather. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with Faithful if that's what winds up serving yeah. the screen yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, the most important casting question I should be asking you is how are you going about finding the right dog? I, was, I, I knew you were going to say. say no, I, I was just waiting for the dog question. Um, My dog's interested. Yeah, I think the dog is probably the most important member of the cast. We got to make sure. We got to get a yeah, good one. Yeah, we do. I mean, look, any, any story with a good dog. <laughs> makes it so much better. A plus dog work in this story. All right. So jumping in to the, I guess the rating of it all, because mm. one thing that I'm yeah. especially cur curious about, especially when it comes to a young adult book yeah. to film adaptation that, you know, features death and perilous situations. Right. Mm. How far do you plan on pushing it in terms of rating? I assume PG-13 is well, the plan with this. PG-13 yeah. is, of course, the goal. Um, but with deaths always comes that R push. But I think we're going to do the best we can to make it PG-13. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I, I am a little bit of a nut when it comes to R-rated movies and mm -hmm. gore and all of that. But it doesn't really feel necessary to yeah. me, at least in this story. There's actually one other thing I wanted to ask you about. You also worked on the journalism side of things for I a did. while, right? And you I covered did. a lot of YA material. I did. Is there anything about your experience working in that field and covering this type of stuff that you find influencing your own work, whether it is the book or the movie version? Yeah, I would say more of an etiquette thing. And I think this is also through being a lawyer, too, is I, I firmly believe this, like, be kind to people, be nice. Um I just, like, I dealt with a lot of people. Some were very nice, some were not as nice. And I just feel like there's so much to say for just being respectful, being kind. Everyone's doing their job and like no one's better than anyone. No one's bigger than anyone. And so I think like I will always, and we've talked about this mm -hmm. too, I hope to always come with a very like kind, humble you know, attitude to everything that I do. Um, and I really do think that that's important. I think that recognizing other people are doing their job, doing the best that they can do. And I think for me, it's just the professionalism and the etiquette. 
plus one to that comment. If only everyone behaved that <laughs> way, it would be a very lovely industry we're all in. Um, what else do I have here for you? I don't want to miss talking about the director. So yes, when, it, com when yes. it comes to finding a director for this project, what specific things are you looking for either in their past work or in your early conversations with them that could signal to you that this is the right creator to bring my story to screen? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you want, who goes first? Well, <laughs> I, I could just I could shortly go first for me as that's loud. We have a helicopter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's our next step. And that's something we've begun to talk about. Um, I think it's one of the hardest things, but also like the most satisfying when done right is to shoot a contained movie. Um, and I think obviously looking into the past, we'd love to have someone that has shot a contained movie and done it well. So for me, obviously, my outlook is to start there and then and then branch out from there. So that's the producer. Yeah. The producer has. Yeah, yours, as, yours as is more writer, yeah, fun. As the but. writer creator, mine's mm -hmm. more. I would love to have someone on board who really appreciates like 90s, late 80s, 90s horror thrillers, someone like. Lee Janiak, who just did the Fear Street trilogy. I think she's incredible. You lovely. I do love her. I also, I mean, I know they're just doing TV, but the Duffer Brothers, someone like that who you can tell has the heart and the passion because this is really, I feel like it's it's not horror, but it's like a lot of that love that went into yeah. those late 90s movies is kind of who I envision. So someone who can get, there's a lot of Easter eggs. There's like the fun, the having the fun together as they're driving up. I want someone who can shoot that and can get that feeling on the screen. I like that description a lot, <laughs> but also plus one for Lee Janiak. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, before I have to let you guys go, you already brought up 90s horror. And yes. I know what you're working on now has a 90s slasher vibe. And there is there is no section within a genre, the 90s slashers that appeals to me most. So uh. when you're writing that, what specific films are you looking towards? And is one of them Scream? I knew that I loved you. Yeah. yeah, so Scream is my number one all-time favorite movie ever. <gasps> I, it's not my number one. It's my number two. But it's my favorite one? franchise yeah. ever. Yeah. Jurassic Park. Oh, amazing. Uh, okay, that's yeah. a really amazing. good one, too. That Scream is, is a very yeah. close second. Yeah. I can't lie. I love Wes Craven. Like, my biggest, I think, upset in life is I never got to meet him. I just, he's amazing. He is lovely. He oh, was you like, met he him. Was a, I, I got to did. interview him I'm once, so and it's like, that is a perfect example of when you should meet your heroes, oh. because That's he incredible. was like the kindest, warmest soul in the world. And I was like sitting there shaking in my boots. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah, I would say Scream for sure. I actually, we've been talking about, um, I'm talking to the editor about like the pitch for it, and it's very much Mean Girls meets I Know What You Did Last Summer. Kevin Williamson is another one of my all-time idols, and heroes and I definitely it's got a lot of I know what you did last summer in it for sure I don't like that was I'm sold I don't know what yeah. specifics you're writing right now but that was the pitch that I needed to, to go and read that when thank it's ready you. um I have to let you go but we get to hang out later yeah, so yes. I'm gonna say thank you for coming by the Collider interview studio at comic-con to everybody out there please go read ski weekend or listen to it like I did because audiobooks are books too check it out you'll love it I promise we'll see you soon with more comic-con interviews